Last year, Laura Frank released the singles The Road and Simple Girl. Her 2023 release thus far is Days Gone By. We're going to talk about that and about her Tamworth and about some other things. Hi, Laura. Hello. How are you going? I'm very well, thank you. It's great to see you. And uh, it's such a great, strong song, Days Gone By, and it's got a fantastic video. I'm actually going to start, though, by talking about the Tamworth Country Music Festival. Right. Because you were awarded Most Promising Future Star at the Australian Country Music People's Choice Awards. That must have been a thrill. I was. It was a thrill and just unexpected. I mean... I didn't, I hate to say this, but I didn't actually know the awards existed until last year. Um, Those particular ones, obviously Mm. I knew about Tamworth, but then one of my fans who has become a really great friend of ours um, saw them and was like, dude, you should be doing this. So (laughs) he, he uh, started the nominations rolling and then, I mean, so it wasn't on my radar and then all of a sudden I've won and it was wild. Yeah. Because it is, yes, it's a separate awards thing and it, it does happen every year that the festival yeah. is on and it is something that artists can encourage their fans to vote for. So um, it's probably it's probably good that not all artists know about it because then you can, you know, encourage your fans they to vote. Definitely. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we shouldn't tell everyone. Yeah. That's right. But did you have to perform, not have to perform, but did you perform at the award ceremony or just it's just a ceremony? Um, Well, it is just a ceremony, but I was asked uh, by Bob, who is one of the organisers, to perform. Um, So Nick and I did perform a song, yes. And it was awesome. It was so lovely. Um, Really, if next year, definitely try and get along to the awards if for all the people watching out there. It's a really lovely event. Yeah. Yeah. I think also takes place in the morning, which is very civilised. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. We're all very civilised at the People's Choice Awards. Well, Tamworth in general is a civilised festival or not. How was yours? <laughs> Mine was very civilised. Um, we only got down there for four well, four days, I think, this year, which, like, the festival is long. Um, so going for the two weeks, I don't know how I would go. I, I think it would be a bit too overwhelming for my particular personality. Um, so four days was a really, maybe a bit short. I think I'd like to go for a week next time. Um, but it was very civilised. We we played a few gigs, um, nothing like really high pressure, which was kind of mm. nice because it was the first one back for us in a number of years because of COVID and mm. last year we didn't go because of the date change and all that, all that stuff. So um and I got to my first golden guitars which was amazing I'd never been before um and it's just a really lovely festival it's really nice I often think for artists though um, you know it's hard enough as a punter to find accommodation but when you're coming down for four days for example it can I would imagine it can be quite hard to just find something for the exact time you need it was very difficult um the times that we have gone uh, we actually stay in Armadale. Um, we're used to driving. So, right. and it's actually kind of nice to escape, mm-hmm. uh, get a bit of reprieve so that you're refreshed and you're ready to go the next day. Yeah. Um, plus, as you say, it's just really difficult financially and saturation, like mm. demand is high. And, yes. but, um, I think they're they're talking about putting some things in place to make that easier going forward. So I'm excited to see what solutions kind of come out of the woodwork because I don't have any. Um, but but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, I think maybe an artist dormitory could be a good idea. I don't know where they'd put it, but you know that sort of thing. Um, but we're going to talk now about the single days gone by, which, as I said, is this really powerful, strong song, and you have this wonderful voice, so you can really deliver it. Thank what you. inspired the song? Um, Well, as you mentioned, The Road was one of my singles last year. Mm -hmm. Um, And that song, um, it was really about feeling lost Um, and looking back kind of on my past and the journey and all the things I've done so far, um, which are many, and (laughs) just kind of going, man, I don't know that I've done the right thing here. Like, um, I mean, we wrote it, Nick and I wrote it together um, in a time during COVID and all of our work was gone and we were just, what do we do? Um, mm-hmm. So that that's kind of where the road came from. Uh, 
but I am like I, I wanted to write a follow-up song to that song and I didn't sit down and write days gone by going this is going to be a follow-up to the road it kind of just happened mm -hmm. and the story evolved but I don't want to look back on my past and all the journey that I've been through so far and go man that was really shitty you shouldn't have done those things I want to mm -hmm kind of look back on it and, and say thank you and find all the good things that happened um, in those days to kind of get me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. um, so really days gone by is kind of a toast to everything that I've done so far um, and just going, here's a new chapter. Every day I've got a chance to live my life the way that I want um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to toast to all the days that have come before and I will move forward with confidence and conviction. And that's days gone by. And we should also mention that you are a working musician. You know, you play a lot in normal time. So, so for you, lockdown, even though you're in Queensland, it wasn't like Queensland didn't have an effect, even though it was relatively free compared with some other states like New South Wales. But yeah. um, but you, it's not like people were having big parties and having weddings and things like that. <laughs> no. So we... Um, I keep talking about Nick. He's my partner and guitarist and all the things. So we're very much a, a team. Um, but we're both creatives and we were full-time musicians at this point. So um, we were playing cover gigs every weekend in pubs, as you say, weddings, corporate events, like all of these events that happen. And then all of a sudden you wake up and go, well, as of tomorrow, none of that's mm -hmm. going to happen anymore. Um, and Nick's other form of work was photography. So again, events not happening. Um, mm. So everything was kind of just lost, but I really can't complain about my COVID time, um, not compared to New South Wales or Victoria. And also it gave Nick and I the space to be able to build this house that I now live in. So I, I mean, as awful as it is, I'm actually kind of thankful for that time um, to help me just reevaluate mm and move forward and building this house is probably the my proudest achievement so far um and being able to do it with my dad anyway I'm sure we'll talk about that later <laughs> well no I'll ask you since you mentioned the house it's made from what I understand out of sustainable materials and so this was not just I'm building a house this is I have to source materials that I'm that you specifically want to use to build the house yeah so we came up with this plan, luckily enough, just before kind of COVID hit, the lockdowns sort of hit. So we were living in a one bedroom apartment in a city. Um, we had a shitty neighbor move in and we're, I was like, man, I need to get out of here. I can't stay. Um, this was before I knew the pandemic was even coming. So one night I was watching Netflix, watching Tiny House Nation. Um, <laughs> I love those shows. <laughs> anyway and I was my brain's always ticking right like it's constantly just going okay what's the next idea how can I do something quirky what's all this stuff so I was watching this show and I'm going man I could do that for sure I could do that going I have no money doesn't matter wouldn't cost that much to build for sure and then also at that time I was reading The Barefoot Investor wow. um so in the book, I can't remember the actual page. I need to find it. But there's a page and he's got a photo in there of like this mound of landfill. And basically uh, he says everything that you see, every single thing around you, if you walk into a shopping centre, every single thing will end up as landfill down to the plastic little things that you get to attach the cardboard tags onto your clothes. And that, like the coat hangers, man, I was just like, it just opened my eyes. And I was like, man, everything that I'm looking at right now is going to end up back in the earth. Mm -hmm. And I, from that day, it kind of really changed my mind. Um, so it happened. Sorry, this is a long story. No, it's a good, that's great because it's, it's, you know, you build songs and you build houses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it didn't only happen from like a financial point of view. It was awesome for us to do it this way, but um, it just became a no brainer for me. Um, mm. So anyway, after watching this tiny house nation, I called my dad and I was like, dad, I think we can do this. 
And dad's been a farmer for his entire life. He's done many things. None of us are carpenters or builders or any of that, but we're all just very handsy. So <laughs> he was right on board. Um, love my parents. They're the best. Uh, and like, I don't know, a month later, we'd found a caravan um, to put on mum and dad's block of land to live in whilst we built our house. Um and just before the COVID lockdowns, we moved out to the farm. So right. was very, very lucky. Um, now, so yes, I wish 100% of my house was recycled, but it is not. Um, it isn't a tiny house either. The, <laughs> it's modest. The idea started as tiny, but then I realised I'm a musician and a photographer and a videographer and... <laughs> you need space a lot of stuff that comes yeah. along with that we had all these grand plans of you know being minimalist and doing all that but it's very hard mm. um so um so our frame and I guess the cladding and the the roof is new right. uh, but every well almost everything else like all of our lining wall and ceiling lining our floors our light fittings our doors our windows everything is secondhand yeah was it hard to source everything because I for anyone who's curious and thinking about it I mean I would imagine that you couldn't just go to one place and say oh all the things are here Uh, yeah (laughs) yeah um it was for sure I think as well like because we're trying to build um a little extension like a studio around as well and again I would love to do it um, out of as much recycled stuff as I can. But I have found that since COVID, Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace have changed. Like it's hard to find things now. Um, and you definitely need time and patience and be willing to go onto Marketplace every day and scroll through and, um, you know, filter through the rubbish to find the gold um yeah yeah but you you really have to be dedicated to do that um yeah I guess if you're financially motivated it is totally a good way to do it (laughs) yeah Yeah. I'm also thinking you know what you've just said is an analogy to writing songs I guess you have to be willing to to go through some songs that aren't going to make it in order to get to ones that are totally it's um it can be a struggle like and it can totally just self-doubt is real like you know I mean you always have these grand plans of sitting down and writing a song and it just being a hit (laughs) but um that doesn't happen and in fact it like it's a little diamond when it does happen um and so you've got to be willing to kind of sit with that and push through that and be uncomfortable and be uncomfortable not being awesome all the time. Um, and that can be hard. That can be really hard. Yeah. Um, and I imagine you also have to push through being uncomfortable when you're building a house because there are invariably going to be things that happen when you're just yeah. like, oh, this was a bad idea. <laughs> and it's like, because I've watched grand designs. I know what happens. Everyone has regrets. So many things like, man, and because it was just us three, so it was Nick, me, and my dad, and we did everything ourselves, um, aside from fitting off the electrics and uh, the plumbing, because legally we're not allowed to do that. But everything else we have done. And I just recall <laughs> so many times Nick and I are up these ladders with a plank across them holding this 2400 by 1200 sheet of ply above our heads like this trying to line it up and make it square and you're just like this is the worst (laughs) why are we doing this um and insulating (laughs) oh get someone else to do that it is not good (laughs) like it's not good itchy for like it's terrible Um, but but you did it and yeah you have a home That's right. I did. And it's a center of creativity. But also, um, given your background as an entrepreneur, obviously, obviously you are prepared to take chances and you're prepared to pursue ideas. So from what I understand, you had a mixed martial arts academy and a cafe. Um, and these are not necessarily businesses that would go together. 
or, and but before that you'd also been in a duo um as a, as a musician and you'd recorded an ep you supported sarah mcleod amongst other things when she was on tour so you obviously uh, when it's not like you have a zillion things you're doing you obviously have ideas you commit to yeah. and you pursue them as best as you can until they've reached their natural end yes uh that's a really nice way to put it sophie thank you <laughs> Because sometimes it feels like <laughs> just a struggle. Um, <laughs> but yes, you're right. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, I've always kind of had the drive to be like, I don't want to work for the man or the woman or the mm-hmm. person. Um, I want to be free, <laughs> even though. <laughs> I mean, owning, doing your own thing is really, can be so restrictive. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I, I opened that MMA gym with my partner of at the time. I was 21 and I don't know, I just was like, why not? <laughs> I, can try, I can do it. <laughs> How hard could it be? Um, you know, like. You just got to, sometimes you just got to jump. And mm-hmm. I, a part of the thing that I, you know, it's like we shoot at the moment all of our own music videos, mm-hmm. um, which I don't want to do forever, but at the moment we do. And we didn't know how to do that when we started doing them. Like Nick, Nick was a photographer, so he had some technical knowledge. But we kind of were just like, man, we can't afford at this point as indie musicians to pay three to five to ten thousand dollars for a music video that you don't reap any financial reward from so we kind of had to just think outside the box and go well how can we do this to look profesh Mm -hmm. (laughs) and be awesome um but save all that money so we just gave it a go and I just kind of thought what's the worst that could happen and that's kind of been my motto the entire time like we opened the cafe as well, which it did start in the gym as like a coffee and protein. Oh. Bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then the, it, what happened was we were in that space with the gym and the, and the little coffee bar at the front and there became just like a few doors down, there became a full blown space to put a cafe available in. Um, and we were like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. We can walk to and from easy. Great. Um, so we did that and it was hard running hospitality is hard mm-hmm. um and that kind of i mean it was successful for a while but i think out of all the businesses that we had that one was probably the closest to and i don't want to say failure but the closest to not successful that that i have done, been through run i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean i i don't regret any of it because I don't think I would have the tenacity or kind of, you know, elderly wisdom to (laughs) be here and know the things that I know and be able to tell these stories and write these songs. And, you know, I think there's, there's a purpose for it all and it's all been useful. Well, and it ties into the song and that's partly why I'm asking you about it because these are your days gone by that we're talking about. Um, yes. And it seems to me that with the businesses you've had and the things you've done, like building the house, you have a natural curiosity. Mm. So there's something that that intrigues you and then you will commit to it. So again, as I said, it's not a zillion different things that have my, maybe five seconds of your attention. And yeah. as with making music videos, been, those videos look completely professional and Thank they're you. all different and creative yeah. Um, and the latest one's beautifully shot for this particular song. So clearly, again, when you applied yourself, you, yeah. you learn how to do it. Just, I like to know how to do things. Uh, yeah. and I like to be in control, which can sometimes be to my detriment. Um, <laughs> so if I don't know how to do something, I'll try and figure it out. Um, I like to kind of not necessarily understand it. I'm a very, okay, this is what needs to be achieved. This is how we'll do it. Whereas Nick is very kind of analytical and he likes to understand every single step, which can sometimes be the cause of some deep arguments. Um, But, you know, we get through. Um, 
but yeah, I, I guess I am curious. I like to explore things. I like to just, I don't know, sometimes like I'm thinking about kind of the rest of the year at the moment and what that looks for, like for me. And I'm, mm, I'm trying to, uh, mm, <laughs> I'm trying to choose my words carefully. Um, <laughs> like I want to trailblaze, right? I want to kind of Actually, I was having this really amazing conversation with our mayor. Uh, so the mayor of the Scenic Rim is just so lovely and he's so supportive of what we're doing. This entire region, the Scenic Rim, has kind of just gone, yes, Laura Frank, what can we do to help you succeed? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it has been amazing. Uh, anyway, and he, I saw him at an event the other night and we are having a really lovely conversation and a little pearl of wisdom that he said to me was, his um, kind of goal and dream is to leave stepping stones for the people that are coming through to mm. enable them to succeed and not necessarily for him to reap all the success and, you know, have this really awesome legacy, but to leave the things that he needs to. And I really resonated with that. Like as much as I want to be awesome and celebrated and win awards and have number ones and all, all that, jazz really I want to take risks and try things different so that people who are coming in after me are brave are brave mm. to do that um I think that's how great art is created mm. um and that's really important to me yeah and speaking of that you actually work with some different organizations that enable that facilitate that indelibility yeah. arts um yeah. and museo magic and outback tracks so i wonder if you could say a bit about indelibility arts because i think you've been involved with them for a while i have so i met the founder of indelibility arts um through <laughs> i was doing a musical theater course um <laughs> so i also have a certificate for a musical theater um <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> I didn't know such a thing existed. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I toured Australia doing a couple of productions and whatnot. But anyway, um, so I met the founder of Indelibility Arts through that course. She was my acting teacher at the time. And really, I was just like, man, how can I just be more involved, learn more? This, this was totally separate to musical theatre. And she came and said to me one day, she was like, look, I'm starting this theatre company it's a theatre company that provide employment for people with disability um, and create opportunities for people with disability in the art space. Do you want to come and volunteer? And no one need knew what that meant at that point in time. It was 2015. They were really just like they had just literally announced that they were opening this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I did. And I went and I volunteered and I did a whole range of different things for those guys. Um, and I still do. I, I mean, like what, it's just an amazing company, like what they have been able to achieve in that amount of time for some of their artists, like they've won Matildas for anybody who knows anything about the acting theater world. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Um, and their whole ensemble is a, a cast of people with varying disabilities. So some have Down syndrome, bipolar, um, muscle dystrophy, um, all sorts of things. Anyway, so I, yeah, I started volunteering and then it kind of just, I because I stuck around, they couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> um, they ended up employing me to do a bunch of different things from like stage managing to tour managing to eventually production managing. And then um, most recently I was their producer for a short amount of time, but things are very busy now. So I've kind of hand those reins over to somebody else, but um, still very closely connected with that company. And they're some of my best friends and they're amazing. Um, and Muso Magic and Outback Tracks. <laughs> um, so I've known Adam Thompson, who is the founder of both of the programs, who people may recognise as the lead singer from Chocolate Starfish, the 90s band. Um, they So Adam founded that um, business about just over 20 years ago. Oh. I did my first workshop when I was 14. Um, and basically what it was back in those days was Adam and another guy, Glenn, 
who is also awesome. Um, they would come out to the school. They would write a song with a group of kids and we would record it. So they would record, let, like, let us record our vocals um, one by one. And then they used to get you to, like, design the artwork and storyboard a video clip. Um, and by the end of the week, so it was usually four or five days long, by the end of that week you would have a CD with the song on it that you sang, that you wrote and you sang, um, which was amazing. Like what they were able to do in that short amount of time is incredible. Um, it's evolved since then. So uh, we now write the song and record it, but we also film a video clip um, in sometimes two days. <laughs> <laughs> so I, again, I did my first one when I was 14. I went back and did another one. And then I ended up being in the master's group, which I think Adam picked like 10, maybe 10 people from his workshops across Queensland to be in like this super group, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, we did a song and then I asked him about going on work experience and I did work experience with them for a couple of years. And then he just one day was like, pretty sure you could facilitate this. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. Um, so it, it's, uh, um, as I said, evolved again. And now he doesn't tend to go into mainstream schools as much, although it does happen sometimes, but we do a lot of work in kind of regional and remote, um, mostly the Northern Territory, but also Queensland and um, Western Australia um, and work with Indigenous communities and write songs and record them with the kids and film, film them and then present it on the, on the last day, which is it's so amazing. I've seen parts of Australia that most people will never get to. And I just feel very lucky. Yeah. So on your passport, what does it say your job is? Because <laughs> you have a lot of skills. Like these are a lot of different skills. No wonder the mayor of scenic room wants to support you. I've got to say, because there's a lot of different skills there, including teaching. So how do you describe yourself? Um, in short, I usually just say, I'm a creative entrepreneur. Uh, I saw the term. I saw the term one day, and I was like, "That'll work." Because <laughs> uh, now I don't know if this probably isn't on my on my little bio that you've got there. But now Nick and I are also we have started another business. <laughs> it's still in the vein. It's still in the same lane, um, uh, which is basically content creation. So right. we're doing photography and, and short form videos for mostly for social media. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just to supplement the, the income, you know, we're trying to steer away from playing cover gigs and we really want to focus on the original music. And sometimes we need a bit of support financially for that. And so mm -hmm. this project has allowed us to do that. Although <laughs> we're doing all three currently. So it's, <laughs> It's a lot. <laughs> well, and also, um, you know, video creation for social media is a particular skill. I think when people go on to social media or TikTok or Instagram and, and musicians, for example, there's the, the pressure to come up with this video content. That's not their core competency most of the time. You know, it, it, it's something that you're doing. Fanny Lumsden knows how to do it. Uh, yep. But really, your musicians, your songwriters, your performers, sure, but making a piece of video is a separate skill. So I would think, yes, that's that's a good business to be in. Thank you. I mean, we're mainly focusing at the moment just to try and make it manageable on businesses in the scenic rim. And um none of them are none of them are really creative. They're mostly <laughs> farms and wineries and oh, interesting. all that, which is really awesome because the whole point, the whole kind of crux of our business is about stories. And mm -hmm. so so that's something as musicians that is a bit niche that we can bring to a farmer's social media content mm -hmm. that a big kind of advertising agency can't. Um, so that's kind of our angle. Although, I mean, there's there's scope and we're definitely getting a few more bites. Of, like there's been talk of doing some music videos for people and other things. So, I mean, who knows? I find it really hard to say no. So <laughs> you never know. <laughs> You never know. Yeah. Well, well I mean, partly what's interesting about your career as a as a musician is that you started as a dancer and um, you were doing a lot of dance and it was your dance teacher who's like, oh, well, you can also sing. Yeah. So 
uh, did you ever, when you were younger, think that being a singer or a songwriter was something you were even interested in, or was it just that you know dance dance was how you expressed yourself? Yeah, I totally did not see singing in my future. Um, I was a dance. I started dancing when I was five, uh, and it wasn't until I was about twelve that I realized I could maybe sing. Um, and so all of those years, I was like, yeah, I'm going to perform and dance and be on cruise ships and you know that's kind of the usual route for Mm. dancers in Australia um and I always thought that although I was all right but I was never very like I wasn't great (laughs) um according to you other people (laughs) yeah that's true maybe um tap was my favorite and I actually went on to become a qualified tap teacher so That's kind of cool that I saw it through. I'm glad I did do that. Although I'll never, I mean, I might tap in a music video someday, who knows, but um, I don't see myself teaching dancing. Yeah. It's always good to have those skills. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Singers who can move is a good thing. Yes. And I would imagine that the the skills you have learnt um, in dancing, but also understanding how to express yourself through your body is really important for you as a performer when you're, on stage with an instrument and trying to make a connection with an audience. Absolutely. Like, so I've been on stages since I was five, as I said, and that has been so helpful to getting me uh, here. I mean, one of the things that I'm really aspiring to be is a great front woman. um, And I want to be legendary at that. So I think starting in dancing has really put me in good stead. Um, Mm. And just kind of understanding that, although, you know, you don't always get it right. Like it's hard. It's just transference of energy. Right. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. Um, But the other thing that dancing has really like been awesome for is one discipline, but two um, costumes. Like I love a costume and (laughs) I am, I'm getting more brave, but I'm not afraid to go, no, I can totally wear a tinsel cape. Um, Why not? (laughs) Exactly. So that's kind of becoming a a fairly large part of my brand now as well. And most of the shows that I do and try and have a couple of costume changes and, you know, again, just think a bit outside the box and something different to nothing against rhinestones and tassels, love them. Um, but something that's a bit extra, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, because the audience is there wanting to be entertained. And I think, you know, performers who understand that are the ones who connect the most because I always think when a, a, an artist walks out on stage and you can tell they understand that they're there to entertain, the audience goes, oh, this is nice. <laughs> I can relax. just relax now. They've got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know who's really amazing at that is Adam Thompson. He is an incredible front man. If you, I don't know if you've seen him live, but I haven't, no. If you get the chance, you should definitely see them play. They play at like Big Red Bash and Monday Monday and all those kinds of big shows at the moment. But he he has got it down. He has figured it out. Um and he always wears a costume as well. So I mean, maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe there's something in that because yeah. he's been a bit of a mentor for me. Not that he's ever called me up and gone, Laurie, you need to wear a costume. No. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> anyway. Well, we have, look, I could keep you talking for much longer oh, because I'm sure there is a lot to, to more to find out about you, Laura, but I've had you talking for a, a while and uh, it is all about your days gone by, both literally and the single Days Gone By. So I hope everyone can go and listen to it and watch your wonderful music video. And I'm looking forward to finding out what comes next for you because I'm sure it will be very interesting. And thank you for talking to me. Thank you so much for having me. Sorry for ranting and rambling. Uh, You are not (laughs) ranting and rambling. (laughs) Thanks. Thank you. See you.